Welcome back, Canonites. Last week we got an in-depth look at the Arbiter skins coming to Season 3 of Killer Instinct with some surprisingly relevant canon details. And pausing a moment, the guys at Iron Galaxy recently showed off the character in action on Twitch TV. The full stream can be viewed on YouTube. Click the annotation on the screen or check the description box for that. But enough focus on the past. Today we're looking at the Storm Rifle and, more specifically, the Fury variant. The Storm Rifle was developed by Lodam Armory, traditionally makers of combat harnesses. After centuries of developing components for various harnesses, Lodam finally produced their own variant, the Storm Harness. It, along with a Ranger variant, likely the one seen in Halo 4 5, would go on to be used by shock troops on missions in far-flung frontier systems, which would seem to explain its rare appearance during the Human Covenant War. Of course, for reasons still unknown, it found prominence with the rise of civil conflict among the Sangheili. Decades after the success of the Storm Harness, Lodam followed it up with a multi-role weapon they hoped would usurp the popular plasma rifle. It would seem that while adoption was slow, Lodam's dream would come true, once again during the escalating Sangheili civil conflicts. That is to say, though the Storm Rifle was never catalogued by the UNSC until 2555, it had been in use for decades prior. And in those decades, more... Peculiar variants were developed by Lodem Armory, among them the rifle that would come to be known as Fury. Since long before recorded history, the Sangheili have given names to weapons that shared in their victories and sacrifices, imbuing their tools of war with honor that could be shared as gifts, freely given as oaths taken, or used as immutable storehouses of glory to be passed to righteous descendants. Etchings and scars commemorate past trials and serve as reminders and tallies of accumulated distinction attesting to elaborate sobriquets that separate simple weapons from arms of legend. For all of its refinements and advanced technology, Fury is not fated to be passed down as an exalted storm rifle, gifted to promising young warriors or kept polished in a Kaiden's collection. In these unsettling times, the line between a tool of slaughter and instruments of peace is often imperceptible. Fury's creator was an artisan of sublime genius and skill, though he would eventually shun his family's traditional ties with Lodem Armory to perfect the art of the kill and the craftsmanship of orbital assaults. In time, the artisan's behavior became impossible to restrain or control, and his eyes became clouded with madness. His name, his titles, and the story of his death were stricken from Covenant records, and only his personal sidearm returned to his home on Capra on Sanghelios, wrapped in linen and sealed with sigils known only to the highest-ranking zealots. Clad in an immutable shell and seething with power that hinted at heretical modifications, Fury quickly passed into the hands of foolhardy Kaepra warriors who sought to use its power to advance their interests. Some found glory, others death, but all burned brightly for a time. Damn, I would love to know more about this nameless Sangheili. Also, fun canon fact, the Lodam Armory shares a name with the Sangheili I think fans are very familiar with, if not by name, then by reputation. I had him! Commander, you fool! A thousand hells await you! Ah, good old Thel Lodemi. I'd love to hear what happened to him someday. Anyway, moving forward, we have a bit of an ad for the print version of Halo New Blood, which comes out on March 15th. If you haven't read it, it's a damn good book that explores Buck's past and what happened after the events of Halo 3 ODST. However, the print edition has something a little more, a bonus five-page coda that gives an intimate look at a conversation between Buck and Veronica that takes place, quote, in the impending shadow of the events of Halo 5 Guardians. As if I needed more reason to pick up the print version. Although, I have to say, this is kind of a middle finger to the folks who bought the digital edition last year, unless 343 plans to make this bonus available to them, too. The same thing happened when Halo Evolutions was re-released in two volumes, both volumes having short stories not available in the original print. I sincerely hope this isn't a trend for 343. Closing out the main article today is a congratulatory shout-out to NASA astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonaut Mikhail Korinenko, apologies if I butchered that, who just finished a 340-day mission on the International Space Station. Their research will help advance deep space exploration. Speaking of shout-outs, the Spartans for Troops livestream is still happening over at Twitch TV slash Operation Supply Drop. Head on over and show some support and consider donating at OperationSupplyDrop.org. With that, we end the article and come to this week's universe entry, the Weapon Antimaterial Z390 High Explosive Munitions Rifle, aka the Incineration Cannon. During the Forerunner Flood War, it was used to clear out sites rapidly undergoing transformation into flood control and flood spore mountains. Sounds like some of those flood creatures encountered in Halo Wars. 
The weapon was also favored by the Didact, and often used by Promethean forces prior to the Didact's confinement in Requiem. Though the Flood seems to be gone for now, the weapon still finds use with created controlled Promethean Knights. And with that, we bring this week to a close. This upcoming week will bring part 2 of my Halo 5 Guardians breakdown which covers all things Meridian. Thanks for watching and until then, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.